Hey everyone, welcome to the Electric Supercar Channel. This week we're going to tackle some much needed paint correction. Let's get to it. Before we get into the episode, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is a tactical turn-based MMO battle game with a strong emphasis on hero collection. Take it easy and play it casually or compete to be one of the best of millions of players with over 80 million downloads worldwide. I'm gonna spell it out, R, referral program. So get more friends to play and everyone gets more rewards. A, arena, test your strength against other players. I, index, I can see any champion in the game, what their skills are and plan effective counter strategies. D, doom tower, climb the tower to defeat powerful bosses and earn up rewards along the way, like new champions. Raid is going on an egg hunt. But we're not hunting for normal eggs, we're hunting for dragon eggs. Just download Raid Shadow Legends using the links below, copy your in-game player ID, go over to egghunt.plarium.com. From April 14th to May 15th, enter your player ID and then journey through the flaming portal to embark on an exciting AR adventure. Scour the dragon's lair using your phone, and if you find the hidden egg, you'll be in for a chance to win amazing in-game items and even real-life prizes, ranging from the legendary Raid Champion to Amazon gift cards with a total value of $20,000. This event is for new players, but existing Raid players can join in on the excellent fun. Go to egghunt.plarium.com and you'll find a special promo code that everyone can use to earn a small in-game gift. So if you haven't started playing yet, you can use a link in the description or scan the QR code. You'll get some great bonuses talking about an epic champion, Kellen the Shrike. Other useful things like energy refills, magic potions, XP brews. You may be wondering what I'm talking about when I say paint correction. So there are parts of the car, the paint kind of laid down pretty nice and there's not a lot to correct. Sadly, the area that is the worst is the front hood, the part that people look at the most. So as you can see, just a lot of orange peel. So the other thing we have is down here, we've got uh, a few areas getting it on and off a trailer, kind of scraped. You can't really see it if you're standing up, but if you're kind of low, you can see it. Another area is right here. So one time putting on the trailer, we scraped pretty hard. This kind of popped up a little bit and it kind of broke out the mounting point. So we need to kind of take this off, um, put some filler on, probably some short strand fiberglass filler and repaint. There are a couple of other areas. So right here, that is where the door latch kind of hits the paint. We didn't give enough clearance. Also right here, we've got, uh, we've got some chipping that happened. Basically when the door raises up, it hit the lift. Right here, these are some splotches from when I put on the windshield adhesive and those just do not clean up. This happened when we were reassembling, when we were trying to put the trunk back on. Um, those little dings kind of happened. We have two areas of minor cracking. This is fiberglass. So you can see there's just a small crack right here. So that will actually have to drill out, dremel out um, and kind of repack with some fiberglass filler, maybe even put some fiberglass sheets from the underside and on the roll hoop. So right here, another crack. So again, we'll have to dremel that one out as well. Here is the windshield. So right here is where the hood comes down and I didn't have adequate cushion. So basically over bumps and stuff, it kind of repeatedly hit this. So it's a slight divot. So we'll go ahead and uh, prep that and fill it, sand it smooth. I just got some marks on here from the windshield adhesive. So I'm gonna take those off and kind of get everything to about a 400 grit. And we'll spray this one with blue as well as clear again. So 
So I filled the spots that need filling. I sanded the whole thing to about 400 grit. I'm gonna add just a little bit of primer and then I'll sand everything to about 600 grit and paint the whole panel. One other part I need to take care of, I showed earlier, but uh, just have a couple scrapes and nicks here on the very bottom. So again, I'll sand those, um, maybe do a little bit of filler and get that primer on. All right, I found uh, two cracks that needed to be taken care of. One is right here. Again, just open it up big time. The other one was here in the wheel arch. So we'll go ahead and uh, put some short strand fiberglass filler on those and sand everything smooth. I'm actually gonna start on the front hood here because I will need to repaint a lot of it anyway. What that means is if I accidentally burn through or something like that, this piece is gonna get repainted. So I've tried to have the camera here on an angle where you can see the light reflection and you can see how it still looks, um, I'll call it spotted. So again, the um, dull areas are the ones that I've sanded, the tops that I've sanded and where it's still shiny, that's underneath. So there's some areas where it's kind of all dull. So again, those are nice and smooth now, uh, but those other areas I need to get just a little bit more. Everything's pretty uniformly dull. There's probably like a few spots like way up here, but I'm just trying to get a section down so I can get the feel of it. So what I'll go to now is I'll go to finer and finer sandpapers and then switch to buffing followed by polish. All right, so I've sanded this one to about 3000 grit. So now we're gonna go on to buffing and polishing. I got done with the uh, kind of high polish and you can actually see kind of reflections really good. Um, so I do see again, some scratches, but the polish looks really good. Start out around 2000 with the orbital sander, go up to about 10,000. Then I'll start off with the uh, wool buffing pad with some aggressive compound. And then I'll move to a foam buffing pad again with a pretty aggressive compound. So I kind of do about four passes with one application and then I will put on, I have to do that about four times to kind of get the uh, level that I'm looking for. Um, I'm just gonna tell you the things I look for. So I have to usually get a light. Let's see if I can find one. There we go. So you see all those little tiny scratches and marks. Um, that's usually what I'm going for. So even though we get like really good reflection, um, I kind of need that light to really highlight just some of those finer scratches. Can you see that right there is a bug that landed in my first paint job. We're going to get rid of it. So that was about another three hours. Um, I think I invented a new sanding technique rather than wet sanding. It's called ice sanding. So I'd spray things there in the back and it'd freeze as I was sanding. I was like, what is this? Cause it'd kind of clump up, almost get like white. And it's like, geez, what is it? It was ice. So, um, but I think this is going to be good enough. I'm going to clean it several times and get it ready for paint. All right. This will be the first time we tried to paint in the new garage. We're still going to use our paint booth. But this way we don't have to worry about it blowing away and we get a lot better light and some increased heat. There we go. We got to fit the whole thing inside. We'll uh, close up the garage and turn on the heat. All right. We are looking at my air compressor. It is still sitting on a pallet. We are going to fix that. I've got some rubber isolators. So I'm gonna use those. I'm gonna get this off the pallet, drill some holes. I've also got some concrete anchors. So I've got a masonry or concrete drill bit. It's 
So I got the uh, rubber isolators on with the concrete anchors. All right, I've got uh, this thing all together. There was probably about 10 different fittings that I had to do. So um, we're gonna fire up the air compressor and see how many of them are leaking. I'm guessing at least two. All right, I checked all the connections and believe it or not, we got two leaks and neither one of them are my fault. So this one, I've got this uh, right here. So it's like this, uh, like a rubber seal as part of this flexible pose. So it's going like to rotate around. And so that rubber seal is not working. The other one is right here. And man, do I hate it when a company kind of pre-assembles everything for you and they give you a leak. Um, but other than that, I sprayed all these down. So no leaks there. Again, for the gauge, no leaks there. There's a port on the back, no leaks there. No leaks there. All the ones I did, I'm pretty proud of. This one's actually going to be pretty slow leaker. This one though, that's, this one's going to be a problem. So we're going to have to replace this one. I've got uh, the blue on all these. I actually had to bring in a space heater so we could get, uh, get up to temperature. So uh, now we'll get on to the clear coat. Here it is next day. So these are panels that had um, damage or enough to touch up that we had to do some base coat as well as the clear. And we did pretty good. I think the, I think the orange peel is way, way better. There's still kind of a few little imperfections here and there. kind of hit this one, give it a little mark. Yeah, I think the, uh, the finish is so much better. And you can see from the uh, reflection, it's pretty good on the paint job. All right, I got the car in. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, masking things off, wiping things down, getting them ready for paint.
All right, this is after uh, painting. Let it sit for a couple days. Tag looks pretty good. We'll get it out of the booth and take a closer look. Here are some of the panels outside the paint booth. Get a little more light on them. Again, looks really good. There are always little spots that need some paint correction though. So this one's got like a little hair or something that happened up here, right there. So here, these are the doors. Again, they look really good, but there's actually this one you can see there's kind of a few spots. That looks really good. Again, just a few spots you can kind of see just the reflection there. So we got to let these sit for, I'm going to say about a week. The clear coat will stay soft for a little bit. So leave them for quite a while, make sure it's nice and hard before we tackle some additional paint correction. We finally arrived. You remember him from earlier. He works on much more, what's the word? Pristine vehicles than this. Doctor, come quick, this doesn't look good. Oh, it's working. I am so surprised. We're gonna start with the hood here. I've actually been practicing quite a bit on a few other panels. And you, you realize it doesn't look too bad, meaning um, previously I had a lot of, I'm gonna call them solid pops and other just distortions. Um, so again, this looks pretty good. You can kind of see the reflection. Um, but what I'm gonna do, I'll probably have a spot here. So, for example, this light, you can't tell that like that is a light with like five different bulbs and things. It's just kind of blurry. We're really looking to kind of get that deep shine and to do that, we kind of need it to be a little more reflective. So first I'm gonna go over this with a thousand grit sandpaper um, going up to 2000 grit and then we'll start buffing and polishing. The polishing is going extremely slow. So if you can see here, just kind of the, uh, I'll call them sanding marks. And it's just, I swear I've seen on YouTube or other places where they go over it like once with a polishing pad and it looks brilliant. And I'm having to go over it like six different applications. So this is kind of what it looks like after the first where you see it's kind of hazy and again, lots of little um, scratch mark still. And I did this one, I started at 2000 and then I went to like 4000 and 7000. So again, I went as fine a sandpaper as I could and still getting some of that. I'll show you on this other side. You'll probably see here. But see, that looks really quite good. So again, if you kind of just look at the light. I've also tried just about every pad and polishing compound. Um, I started with uh, Chemical Guys. I've got, I think it's called Jesscar. Again, these are heavy cut compounds. Um, I've got Meguiar's and I've done kind of wool pads. I've done uh, kind of the cloth pads. I've done the foam pads. And for me, it's like, I can't get a heavy enough cut because it still leaves like a lot of just the scratches, the residual scratches from the sandpaper. And so I got uh, several sandpapers. So again, this is like 2,000, 4,000, so up to 7,000. And so I, I thought I'd give me a head start so I wouldn't have to polish so much, but man, this is just taking so long. But it'll look so good. Um, you can now see that we've got a light. It's got several lights on it. On this side where we haven't done anything, you can tell it's just kind of a big blob. 
right again you can kind of see the reflection we got this really smooth looking really good see how many fingers am i holding up can you see in the reflection two three four so again i think we got this really good All right, I got a package here from Send Cut Send. Last time I got Sour Patch, this time Skittles. So these are rear vent covers. Um, previously I had plastic and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna do these out of metal. Sent some designs over to Send Cut Send and got them made. So these look really good. They're anodized aluminum. I got a black wrinkle anodized. It's one of the features you can get from Send Cut Send. They've actually hooked me up with a code. If anybody wants to uh, get some parts from them, I'll put a link in the description below. So I ended up doing the side vents as well as now the rear vents. Boom, boom. Shame on me for not knowing, but uh, one of my favorite sponsors, Fiberglass, actually has some buffing and polishing products. So let me show you what I got. All right, so they offer a kit which has polishing pads as well as the polishing compounds. Um, also, you can just buy the polishing compounds by themselves and they come in some easy to read things. So cut. So again, this has got like kind of max cut and the finish and then this one's like extra fine. So again, you see finish is full and then they've kind of got one that goes in between. As you guys know, I've been struggling to find a, a good product. I shouldn't say good product, but a product that works quickly. So the products I've used work really good. I just would love it to work a little faster. So I'm going to try this one, um, see how it works. The wing is one of the last areas that I have not done any paint correction yet. All right, so it's uniformly dull, went to 10,000 grit. In the times past when I've done this, it still takes forever for the polishing to get things really nice. So we'll see if this new stuff has the trick. All right, here it is after about uh, three or four passes. So I think, you can just kind of see the light there, but I think this one is cutting a little faster, which man, I would have loved just throughout the whole process. It took so long. Um, I, I would say this one, I think particulates just a little bit more, but that one actually doesn't bother me. I'd much rather have something cut quick. So um, this is, like I said, about after three passes, um, they've got kind of a stiffer foam, and this is the heavy cut compound. And so now we'll probably switch to uh, some of the more finer polishes. All right, I'm probably gonna go over the car one more time with the finer polish, bring out just the deepest shine I can and call it done.
All right, my friends, I'm gonna call this done. It looks really good. I think I did a good job. I will say the more you do the polishing, I'm gonna say the more defects you see. A lot of the defects come from the very beginning, I'll call it uh, when you're smoothing the body. So if you don't do that well, it's just kind of downhill from there. But this is just absolutely gorgeous. So you can see the reflection really well. Just shining like a jewel. You can see we got, uh, you can see all the lights instead of just the one big blur. All right, at the end, we're gonna talk about some of the tools we used. I guess we'll kind of start in order. For sanding prep, I used a orbital sander. I really, really liked this 2000 grit sandpaper. It was able to cut through things really quickly and did not clog. Um, for any of the flat stuff, um, I used some of these uh, flexible sanding blocks and I like the Duragold sandpaper for the finer and finer sandpapers. I also got these, these were, um, they go up to like 10,000 grit. So again, to try and make things go a little quicker, uh, sanding goes a little quicker than polishing. After we did that, um, painting, I just used a Eastwood paint gun. Polishing, um, I picked up this set. Um, it was actually the chemical guys that came with um, the uh, dual action polisher as well as some of their um, polishing compounds. Um, and it's also got some of this conditioner. I also tried, um, the Jeskar Heavy Cut Compound, Meguiar's Glaze. I tried lots of different pads. Um, so I would say the wool pads tend to cut probably the fastest, maybe the microfiber or cloth ones next. Um, I did try several different, the foam pads. I like the foam, I feel like uh, it's more forgiving, but uh, definitely cut a little bit slower. But overall, again, really pleased with the process. So I'll put links in the description for a lot of these items. And remember, Anything that you get off these links, even if it's not one of these items, if you click on a link and buy something, I will get a small commission. All right, besides the things you can find on Amazon, these things you can find at fiberglass.com. Again, they worked really well for what I was doing. So if you got polishing needs, go visit their website. All right, so this was about a six month process. We had a couple interruptions along the way, but I think the result is absolutely fantastic and I'm just really thrilled. So that'll do it for this time. See you next time.